The man is strapped to the front of the vehicle, followed by a pair of oddly shaped modified chariots. This is the world after the outbreak of nuclear war, the land is barren, and there is no food. Immortan Joe, the only man with access to water, has become a post-apocalyptic ruler, but he's also festering with tumors and can only live on a respirator. His men are all anemic and need a constant supply of fresh blood to keep them alive. Max, the only normal man left, is hung upside down in the air as a human blood bag, until the day Immortan Joe ordered Imperator Furiosa out to replace the supplies. But Furiosa's chariot is in the middle of its journey when it suddenly changes course without permission. Joe's dwarf son happens to see the scene. When he heard the news, Joe took all his men out with him, as Furiosa took not only 10 tons of petrol but also Joe's five beautiful wives with him. A furious Joe sets out in pursuit with dozens of modified chariots. They pursued Furiosa in the direction of his path, and Max was even more pathetic as he was tied to the front of the car to continue the blood transfusion for the anemic patients behind him. These white-covered boys have been brainwashed and raised from a young age. We'll call them war boys. In their minds, Joe was a god, like Knox. Joe just looked at him, and he was as excited as if he'd been given a stimulant. He even shouted in excitement. I am awakened in Valhalla! The Valhalla is a sacred place in their hearts. Only those who have died bravely on the battlefield can go there. On the other side, Furiosa's convoy is moving at full speed. The boys in front of the car spotted a flare in the distance. This means Joe has spotted them. And to make matters worse, their car is driving into the territory of the Vulture tribe. Soon several hedgehog chariots are chasing them. They even laid the trap in the ground. And a steel cable overturned the lead chariot. But Furiosa reacted quickly and dodged it in time. Vulture tribes never play by the rules. When they caught up, they rammed the chariot with their spikes, trying to puncture their tires to intercept them. War Boy counters with an exploding spear. A teammate fires a cannon and successfully destroys a hedgehog chariot. Furiosa sees the moment and secures the car's throttle. She raises her crossbow and destroys another hedgehog. This wave destroys two vehicles, but behind her is a spiky digger. The counterattack has slowed them considerably, allowing Joe's convoy to catch up. They decided to take care of the vulture tribe first. The war boy grazes Max's scalp and throws a spear. At the same time, the teammate in front shoots a hooked rope to hold the enemy back. Nox takes the opportunity to drift and crash, and the hedgehog's skull is instantly ripped off. At this point, a war boy tries to attack but is hit by a crossbow bolt. But he was not afraid and immediately sprayed paint on his mouth. This means he's going to the Valhalla. The next moment, he grabs his explosive spear and leaps. Choosing to die with his opponent, his teammates were there to see him die. This was a moment of supreme honor for him. The war boy's death sent his teammates into a frenzy. They threw spears at the enemy in a frenzy. Suddenly Nux's car is hit. He accelerates into a tailspin, then reverses into the opposite digger. The rest of the team took advantage of the situation and started attacking frantically. After a frenzy of bombardment, the car's chainsaw is destroyed. Three grenades fell from the ground. And then, with a bang, the chariot was blown to scrap metal. The vulture tribe was settled, but a huge sandstorm suddenly appeared ahead. Even the mighty chariot was so small in front of it. Max, tied to the front of the vehicle, was desperate. At the same time, the war boys are turning on Furiosa. They attacked her chariot again and again, but unexpectedly, Nux's car has a flat tire. The war boys try to untie Max's chains and send him to the back of the car to add weight. But Max is no fool. He saw his chance and kicked his opponent down the car. Seeing the sandstorm approaching, Max tries to climb inside the car to hide. But Nux closed all the windows. The car was already in the middle of a terrible sandstorm. Max had to hold onto the chains to keep himself from falling. In the sandstorm, yellow sand rages and lightning flashes. Furiosa's chariot, by its weight, smashed the other cars to pieces. The car was caught in the sandstorm and then exploded. This scene made Nux even more frantic. He caught up with Furiosa's chariot with a kick of the accelerator. He then filled the cabin with petrol and sprayed silver paint on his mouth. He took out a torch and tried to kill Furiosa. Max tried to stop him. In a panic, Nux slammed on the brakes, only to be hit directly by the oncoming truck behind him. The car was torn to pieces. Both of them were thrown out of the car. When they woke up again, the sandstorm was gone. Max got up out of the sand. He tried to free himself from the chains, but it was impossible. Suddenly he sees a chariot not far away. He carries Nux closer and finds five beautiful women in the bath. They are Joe's five wives. Max threatens them with a gun to help him untie them. He then takes them with him and escapes from the desert. Unbeknownst to him, Nux has also sneaked up the car from the back. 
The chariot travels down the valley but is suddenly attacked by bikers. They are also interested in the 10 tons of petrol. The biker's leader orders the rock to be blown up to stop Joe from coming up behind him. He then sets off in pursuit of Furiosa. They leap easily over the surrounding slopes and frantically throw petrol bombs at the chariot. As the chariot burst into flames, Furiosa had to activate the push shovel on the front of the vehicle to put out the fire using the sand thrown up. The flames were soon extinguished. Meanwhile, Joe's convoy was blocked by debris, but his chariots were varied and big. He can easily get over the obstacle with one of his Bigfoot chariots. The bikers are still attacking Furiosa's side. The two men had to hide in the cab to fight back. After a period of accurate point-blank fire, the bikers were eliminated individually, but Joe's Bigfoot is gaining on them. Joe followed the chariot. He spotted Furiosa and was about to fire when a pregnant woman suddenly pushed open the door. Joe hesitated. She was carrying his child. His son. A dwarf. A retard. He had to put down his pistol, but he was no pushover and leaped straight in front of the chariot. Then his eldest son shot a hook lock that caught Max's steering wheel. Max's hand was stuck in a death grip. Joe's wife saw this and helped him cut the chain. The chariot was about to lose control and crash into a boulder. Furiosa had a brainwave and used a spanner to clamp the steering shaft. Chariot's thrilling brush with boulders, but Joe's wife failed to hold onto the chariot and fell off. Joe changed the car's direction to avoid his wife and flipped it over on the spot. But he couldn't save her after all. And the baby is dead too. Joe was furious and sent more convoys after them. Max shakes off Joe but doesn't dare stop. He asked Furiosa where she was going. Furiosa answered Oasis. That's where she's from. It may be the last place for humans to live. Nux goes through a series of ups and downs and no longer believes in Joe. At the urging of Joe's wife, he decides to come with them to the Oasis. Soon night falls. They traveled through the pale night air. Suddenly, the chariot plunges into a swamp. But the tracked vehicles in Joe's convoy continued their pursuit. And they're still firing ahead with their searchlights. In desperation, Furiosa hefted her sniper rifle and a shot cost them their eyes. They then used the hinge to successfully get the chariot out of trouble. Before leaving, Max also dropped several mines near the ruts. This action again destroyed Joe's number of chariots. A chain reaction brought Joe's convoy to a complete halt. This bought Max much time to escape. On the way, they passed through a swampy area and saw many crow men on stilts, wandering through the mud like ghosts. The sight brought a look of surprise from everyone. Max couldn't believe the oasis existed. After a night out, they reached the oasis that Furiosa remembered. But as far as the eye could see, it was still a desert in the middle of nowhere. Furiosa gets out of the car to check the situation. But suddenly motorbike riders come out of nowhere. These were her people. The clan told her that the swamp at the feet of the raven's man was once an oasis, but the land had become a living hell because of acidification. Furiosa crumbles to her knees. She couldn't believe it, and her last hope was dashed. At night, she said goodbye to Max. She will lead her people to rediscover a new home for survival. Max didn't refuse, but the next day, he caught up with Furiosa on his motorbike. He pulled out a map with Joe's base on it. Now that Joe's troops are out in full force, the base is naturally underguarded. They could use this opportunity to seize the base, and there was plenty of water to grow crops. The men thought for a moment and agreed to the plan. Then, once again, they drove their chariots toward the base. But soon, Joe's men spotted Max's trail. Joe instantly understood their intention to turn back. He quickly led the army toward Max from all sides. Soon, a high-powered race car was in pursuit. They kept attacking Max. Even the old lady got in on the action. War Boy got in the front of the car and frantically sprayed petrol into the engine with his mouth. As expected, the acceleration of the chariot is very noticeable. It overtook and immediately showered spikes to the rear. Furiosa was unable to dodge, and her tires were punctured. Not only that, but Joe's convoy attacked in various ways. The vanguard stood directly on the 5-meter pole and attacked Furiosa's chariot from all directions. They used the air to throw smoke bombs into the car and even strangled Furiosa with a rope. It's a good thing the old lady stepped in to help Furiosa. The large army in the rear shot the chariot's oil cans with hooks and lowered their plows to increase the friction on the ground and force the chariot to slow down. But the chariot was heavily armored and powerful. The opponent's chariot had just overtaken and was overturned by Furiosa's chariot. Max is on the back of the vehicle, trying to cut the chain. The moment the chain breaks, the inertia is so strong that it can knock over a car. Suddenly, a member of the vanguard descends from the sky. 
He bursts into the cab and snatches one of Joe's wives. Much to Joe's satisfaction, one of Joe's five wives has been retrieved. At the same time, many vanguards climbed into Furiosa's chariot. Max reacted by going to the front of the vehicle to help. He leaps and pushes an enemy down. During the struggle, he accidentally fell off the chariot. But Furiosa caught him by the leg in time to save his life. But the opposing chariot uses this opportunity to close in on Max. In the nick of time, Furiosa was quick to redirect. This caused the car in the middle to be crushed to a pulp and explode on the spot. With the help of Nux, Max jumped onto the other car. He then dragged the driver out of the vehicle and took control of it. But Joe was not to be trifled with either. He ordered his men to overtake Max and sprayed fire on the cab of his car. With Max about to be turned into a suckling pig, Furiosa stepped on the gas and crushed the enemy car. At this point, the flames of the tanker were getting higher and higher. Max took over a man's big fat foot and stepping on the gas. He then jumped on Furiosa's chariot. Immediately afterward, the tanker exploded. Nearly half of Joe's chariot was blown up. The chariot travels down the valley with Joe's convoy still in hot pursuit. He even drove his big foot out in front to try and block Furiosa's chariot. Furiosa hands over the driving seat to Nux. She's going to kill Joe. Meanwhile, Max sneaks up on the giant surround sound and fights with the guitarist. Joe's wife also faked her surrender and moved ahead to Joe's car. She's going to help Furiosa climb into the chariot. But as soon as Furiosa got up, Joe's eldest son spotted him. Max got his attention just in time. But this guy was too big. Max was a toy in front of him and was no match for him. As they fought, Furiosa snuck around the side and climbed into Joe's car window. She hooked Joe's respirator with a hook and chain. Remember me? She threw the chain into the tire and instantly ripped off half of Joe's face. This killed Joe straight away. Max rushed over and pulled Furiosa into the car. The crowd started to move to the Bigfoot. Nux decided to let everyone go first while he drove to block his pursuers. The chariot passed a cliff before. The big man who had been knocked unconscious suddenly rushed up. He saw his father's chariot being taken over, and in a rage, he ripped the engine out. Nux was dumbfounded at the scene. He couldn't believe that this big man was so powerful. By now, the chariot had lost its power. He gave his life to stop the pursuers behind him so they could leave. Shortly afterward, Furiosa led the group back to Joe's base. When the refugees saw Joe's body, the emotions building up for years finally exploded. They rushed to tear him apart. They shouted Furiosa's name. The guards of the city also gave up their resistance. Furiosa became the new savior. Instead, Max quietly blended into the crowd, leaving all the glory to Furiosa. She will build a new home for the survivors. And that's the end of the film. Thank you for watching, and remember to subscribe to my channel. See you next time.